Hello, I'm Nima Rajan. The International Monetary Fund is predicting Canada's economy will shrink by 8.4% this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Globally, it is predicting a drop of 4.9% in GDP. It now believes the economic damage caused by the pandemic will be far more severe than it predicted just two months ago when it forecast a drop of 3%. The IMF says the COVID-19 pandemic is disproportionately hurting low-income households and losing the significant progress made in reducing extreme poverty in the world since 1990. An Alberta Indigenous leader is due in court today in Fort McMurray on charges of resisting arrest and assaulting a police officer. First Nation Chief Alan Adams' violent arrest that was caught on RCMP dash cam video sparked widespread condemnation. The dash cam footage was released publicly as part of a court application to stay criminal charges against Chief Adam. Public Safety Minister Bill Blair says he has started contacting Indigenous leaders across the country to figure out how to best transform policing in their communities. Yesterday, he told the House of Commons Public Safety Committee that First Nations policing must be made an essential service. Beijing is warning that it will take countermeasures after the U.S. added four more Chinese media outlets to a list of organizations that should be considered foreign missions because of their ties to the government and its ruling Communist Party. A foreign ministry spokesperson attacked the Trump administration's move as yet another example of the U.S.'s flagrant political suppression of the Chinese media and a betrayal of America's commitment to freedom of the press. U.S. State Department officials say the four organizations, including state-run CCTV, will be required to submit the identities of all staff in the U.S. and any real estate holdings, just as they would if they were foreign embassies or consulates. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is criticizing the total lack of international coordination in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. He says countries must coordinate their efforts because the go-at-it-alone policy that some have adopted will not defeat the virus. The pandemic is flaring in the United States, and because of that, Americans likely won't be allowed into Europe when the continent reopens its borders next week. British Columbia's top doctor says contact tracing is the primary tool that public health officials have been using in the fight against COVID-19, not any fancy new app. Dr. Bonnie Henry says health officials are already familiar with tracking people who have had contact with carriers of other diseases and COVID-19 is no different. She adds that apps, like the one recently promoted by the Prime Minister, is more useful for when people may have spread or contracted the illness in a large crowd of people. Toronto and Peel region restaurants have been given the all-clear for patio service today as the two major populations join most of Ontario in stage two of the province's economic recovery plan. Other services are being allowed to resume as well, including barbershops and salons. Only the southern Ontario region of Windsor-Essex remains locked in stage one due to a stubbornly high number of COVID-19 cases on the area's farms. A controversial practice that allows hospitals in Manitoba to notify child welfare agencies about new mothers who are deemed to be high risk will end this month. Families Minister Heather Stephenson says birth alerts will no longer be issued effective July 1st. The government previously did a review that found birth alerts were discouraging expectant mothers and families from reaching out for prenatal support. About 10,000 children are under the province's care. While looking to take charge of water systems on First Nations reserves across Atlantic Canada, a group of Indigenous communities are banding together to create their own utility. Ottawa will provide $2.5 million to assist in the formation of the Atlantic First Nations Water Authority, saying that it will be the first Indigenous-owned and operated water authority in the country. Things are expected to be up and running on their own by the spring of 2022, with a leadership team to be appointed by next April. Meanwhile, Atlantic Canada's tourism sector is set to get a financial boost from the federal government's Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency. The funding, which will be distributed to several organizations, will go towards promoting destination development and assisting with marketing strategies as COVID-19 restrictions are lifted in the region. The $2.4 million will go to groups in all four provinces. New cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. have surged to the highest level in two months. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's top infectious diseases doctor, says the next few weeks will be critical and an effort will be needed to tamp down the most serious spikes. He is calling on Americans to avoid crowds or at least wear a mask when physical distancing is not possible. Dr. Fauci also noted that top health officials had not been asked to slow down virus testing, despite U.S. President Donald Trump's claim last weekend that he had ordered fewer tests. 
Well, more than a thousand European lawmakers have signed a joint letter protesting Israel's planned annexation of parts of the occupied West Bank. The group says such a move would be fatal to hopes for a peaceful resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's part of a growing international outcry against the Trump administration's Mideast plan and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's promise to begin annexing parts of the West Bank that have Israeli settlements, perhaps as early as July. Indonesian fishermen have discovered 94 Rohingya Muslims on a wooden boat adrift off Indonesia's province of Aceh. Police say they were found on the boat about six kilometers off the coast. Police say they have remained on the boat awaiting a decision by the local government whether to accept them. Rights activists are fearful that large numbers of Rohingya, a persecuted Muslim minority from Buddhist Myanmar, may be trapped on boats at sea. Reports say they are fleeing ongoing persecution in Myanmar and hardship in refugee camps in Bangladesh, where many have fled. Early results from a Canada-wide survey of pregnant women show expectant mothers are reporting higher levels of anxiety and depression in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. The University of Calgary's Catherine LaBelle says symptoms of anxiety and depression during pregnancy are associated with preterm births and lower birth weights, among other adverse outcomes for the mother and child. LaBelle adds that support from social circles is key to reducing those symptoms. Well, that'll do it for today's news update. I'm Nima Rajan. Thank you for joining us today, and I'll see you next time.